sure if Judah has already done his service or not. I might have been wrong. What's up, Rich? Happy birthday. Hi, Dad. Hi, What's up, partner? How are you? I'm good, bro. How are you? I'm doing good. Happy Sunday. Happy birthday. Thank you so much. Did you, did you, do, uh, did you do any sort of church today? Or? Yeah. You did? Yeah, we have like 10 services on. On live? Uh, we recorded it on Wednesday, and so it's like a stream, you know? So 8 a.m., 10 a.m., 12 p.m., 2 p.m., 4 p.m., 6 p.m., 8 p.m., 10 p.m. It's pretty cool. Wow. Wow. Yeah, it's like a mouthful, you know? What are you doing? Just hanging, man. I miss you so much, bro. Did I'm you get my video? So Did you get yeah, Haley and I get video? It. Yes. You did? That's great. So you I know think my I was supposed to be going on, I was supposed to be going on, uh, like, doing, going live with Judah as he did, you know, preach the gospel. But um, I'm not sure if... Uh, I missed it or not. I think I might have gotten the time wrong, and now he doesn't seem to be. Dad. Was that 1 p.m.? I think so. I think I might have missed it. Hey, can you do another um, The Floor is Lava video tonight? Okay, will you do one? <laughs> I mean, I'm not as creative or as athletic as you. Well, you should do it anyway, though. I'll do one. But yours was masterful last night. Thanks, man. I got a, I got a lot of good feedback for that. <laughs> Things awesome. I feel like you could make him even crazier, like... You're walking yeah. on foam rollers. We literally we didn't take much time with it. Like we set that up in like 15 minutes, and that was pretty much it. See if you can um, surf downstairs or something. I tried to like do this, incorporate the stairs, but it, it wasn't gonna happen. It just was too dangerous. So I was trying to put stuff there, and just like I don't want to. I don't want to like hurt myself for the amusement for others. You know what I mean? Like, that's not my goal. <laughs> I miss you so bad. Miss you, bro. You been feeling good lately? Yeah. It's kind of a crazy time, obviously, but we are quarantined in the house with the boys. Doing good. Yeah. Nice. How are you feeling? Uh, I feel good, man. I feel really good. I feel really good. People are, like, expecting me to do, like, I, I posted that I was doing church right now, and it's, like, they're, like, expecting me to have church, so it's, like, you and I, you and I are just, like, on chat, like, not even doing anything to do with church. Give us a little, give us a little, give us a little, uh, five minute, who is, who is Jesus? What's the gospel like to you? Like, what is, what is the gospel? In what is the gospel? Minutes, give, give me five minute gospel preaching. Go. The gospel is the good news, and the good news of Jesus is that all of us uh, were born broken. We're all, we all have a sense and a desire for God. We all have a hole in our soul. Um, I think it's in moments like this that we're all aware of that hole. We all miss each other. We all miss life and purpose, and um, humanity's broken, but Jesus came to fill the hole. And so what we believe is we believe that Jesus is God's son, that he came to this world in the form of a man, and that he uh, lived a spotless and perfect life. And essentially, he became the atoning sacrifice. That's a churchy word, but he paid the price for our sin because he was the only sacrifice that was worthy to pay the price. He lived perfect. So he went to a cross, and his blood was shed. And we believe that if we put our trust in him, that because of his sacrifice, because of his death, that he paid our punishment, that we don't have to fear the wrath of God or the anger of God because of our imperfection or sin. 
but rather because of Jesus' sacrifice, we put our trust in him and that he didn't just die, but he, he resurrected. And so um, every Sunday we gather to preach that message and remind ourselves that we have a God who loves us so much that he was willing to die for us. And the fact that he resurrected means that he's alive today and that he wants to, his spirit wants to live through us. And so every day we're empowered by his grace to go after our purpose and into our future. And so, um, yeah, anyone who's watching right now, we just want to let you know that God loves you. God is for you. God's not mad at you. God already, yeah, if anyone's ever told you God's going to punish you, he, he already punished Jesus. And so our message is really one of belief, one of trust, uh, one of knowing that God's love is, is greater than any mistake we've ever made. And I think for you and me and for so many others, we find such strength in surrender to him. I don't think God's looking for our strength. I think he's looking for our surrender. Mm -hmm. And today I was preaching to our church on the gratitude effect that in times like this, in our darkest moments, uh, we can always still be grateful for what Jesus essentially has done for us. And um, we're preaching at home right now about the days leading to the cross before Jesus got to the cross and what he did on Monday, what he did on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday because Easter's coming up. And so uh, I was teaching on the Passover day, the, the last supper meal. And at the last supper, he broke bread and he gave thanks. And I believe that he was giving us a principle that in our hardest moments, our most challenging moments, we can still give thanks because when we give thanks, uh, essentially we're living a life of gratitude and gratitude is the thing that we need. I think in moments like this, because it gives us a bigger perspective it helps us step into the future uh, confident of what God has already done in the past and what he'll do again in the future. So do you, what are some do, of my thoughts? Do, do you think, um, so you, you would say that we don't need to like earn God's love for us. Like no. we don't need to do good things to earn God's love. We could never do enough good things. You know what I mean? That's, that's, that's the whole point of what I think we're preaching every week is that there's no way to earn it. You couldn't do enough good things to be good enough and you can't do enough bad things to be bad enough. It literally comes down to trust and belief in what he's done for us. And that's, that's the way that we respond to him is that, his, that the fact that he paid the price, we just simply believe. And as we believe, it's right believing that leads to right living. So, no, you can't earn it. How, how, come, how come you can't do enough good things? Because a lot of people would say, like, because I'm, it's like, this, I'm, a good, it's like I'm a good person. And so a lot of people would say, like, I'm a good person. Like, so what would – what would you say to that person who says, well, I, I'm a good person. I do good and yada, yada, yada. Yeah. I think that doing good is once again, parts of doing good at times can be subjective because you can do good with the wrong intentions. And is that good? But ultimately I think that God, his standard, the scripture says that all have fallen short of the glory of God and the glory of God being the standard of his perfection. So a really basic analogy is if God's perfect, let's say perfect is the moon. And let's say we're trying to jump to the moon. Well, you know, LeBron James can definitely jump higher than me, but if the goal is the moon, he's not jumping that much higher than me. He's still a long yeah. way off. And so yeah. I think with our good deeds, there's no way we can be perfect. We've, we've had bad thoughts. We've yeah. done evil things. Our motivations yeah. at times are corrupt. Why we do what we do. And um, yeah. that's why we need grace because grace is the, yeah. is the bridge from us to the moon. Yeah. So what is grace? Grace, by definition, is the unmerited favor of God. Uh, a good way of saying it is that grace is, uh, is God's empowerment on our lives, and grace is, the, grace is the bridge from us to God. It's, it's, the only way we could get there is by God giving us favor, is by God saying, you know what, I'm not going to judge you by your actions. I'm going to love you in spite of you, despite of you, like... I'm a broken human being. And the thing about receiving grace is acknowledging that. It's simply going, yo, I don't have it all together. I've got brokenness. I've missed the mark. I'm not perfect. And I'm in need of God's grace. And grace by definition is the fact that God, not based upon my merit, grants me favor, grants me acceptance, grants me approval uh, because of the sacrifice once again of Jesus, that Jesus paid the price for all of our mistakes. And so with that being said, um, is that why, so that's, that's what you'd say, that's why we need Jesus, because what he's done is he, he took the punishment so that that is the grace. So what he did is he took the punishment himself so that we don't have to live in shame and fear and, 
you know, um, yes. being not good enough because like ultimately everybody's striving to like be, you know, to be good. Everybody wants, you know, there's, you know, for the majority, I feel like people, you know, are striving to be the best versions of themselves. And, you know, they do that in different ways, whether it's, you know, like, you know, being the best at what they do in their career or, you know, trying to be the kindest they can to people or nice to people. But like you're saying, people just miss the mark. No matter how good you try to be, you're not going to be perfect. And so that's why, you know, Jesus sent his perfect son who knew no sin, became sin so that we could become right with God because sin separated us with God. Am I correct? Absolutely. And it does. Sin is a wall between us and God. And that's why we, that's why we pray to Jesus. We thank God for Jesus because it's his sacrifice. It's his death. It's his punishment that unseparates us, that opens the line up. Not because God is a bad God, because God is perfect and we are not. And perfection can't have imperfection. And so Jesus is the bridge. So when God says don't do things, he's not saying it to be this guy who's like, you know, I'm setting rules. And if you do this, you're a bad person. God's basically saying, don't do these things because I want you to have the most full life you can possibly live. And this is yes. actually going to make your life worse. Not, it's not because he wants to be this God that's like, you know, don't do this. You're, you know, like, and be this like fun police, right? Is that what you'd say? I totally believe it that way. I think that God, he has different principles and different rules, whatever words you want to use. And I, I, I tend to think of God's rules as like guardrails. And it's yeah. like, can you drive on the highway without guardrails? For sure. But it's not recommended. What ends up happening is that guardrails are there for your safety, for your protection, to help yeah. keep you aligned. And I think that so much of God's word, the Bible, is helping us get from point A to point B in the safest, uh, most effective way. And so whether that's our relationships, whether that's our families, whether that's how we conduct business, whether that's our personal lives, it's not God saying, let me limit your life. It's like God saying, I actually have the best plan for your life. And if you'll trust me and if you'll obey me, uh, I'm going to lead you from point A to point B, the most efficient and effective and healthiest way. So, yeah, I don't think that God's up there trying to be mean or slow us down. I think that God has a beautiful plan for everybody and a beautiful purpose. But we so often trust ourselves more than what we trust him. It always comes back to trust, doesn't it? Like, do I trust God? Like, <laughs> Do I trust God? And many times trusting God in the short term is very difficult. In the long term, it leads to a better, beautiful life. But, but sin is always e easy in the short term, but it always hurts you in the long term. It's like I'm just learning this all the time, whether it's, you know, eating a DiGiorno pizza right now is going to taste good going down, but it's not going to maybe produce uh, the body, the life, the health that I want. That's how sin works, I think, so often. That's how we break God's parameters. It maybe feels good temporarily, but it doesn't produce – what I'm looking for, purpose, um, confidence. Instead, it produces shame, guilt, regret, pain, heartache, addiction. So God's so for people. God loves people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is good stuff, man. It's powerful. I love you. A lot of people are, a lot of people, I mean, I know that I had for a while, but like you put God in this, you know, category of this box that you feel like, you know, God is this superior thing in this, like, you know, that is like, when I do something bad, he's like, you know, basically disappointed in us, you know? And like, so we do something bad and we like sit in this shame where God's saying, you know what, like, he's like, every time we fall, he wants to pick us back up. And it's like how, you know, you know, a moment, what was that story with Peter on the water? Was it Peter yeah. that walked out to Jesus and he fell in the water? Yep. You know, when he fell in, when his faith got low, Jesus didn't shame him. He picked him back up, right? Yep. So I think that's a good picture to like, you know, it's just a great picture that Jesus, when we, when we lose faith, when we do something that isn't, you know, necessarily the best for us, God isn't like, you know, you're a bad person who's basically like, I want to, you know, keep going. I love you. I already paid the price for that. Don't wallow in that sin and shame. But the devil wants us to sit in that, right? And he Absolutely. wants us to wallow in that shame. The scripture says that the righteous man falls seven times, but he gets back up. And I've always loved that verse because 
you think if someone falls seven times, that would make them not righteous, but it's the act, actually the opposite. Our righteousness is always about us running back to the Father. And yeah. you know, in the scriptures, you never can find in the scriptures like a picture of Jesus running. Like Jesus was never in a hurry. He was relaxed. He was yeah. patient. He was walking. Yeah, the only time to make I, his babies and stuff. Yeah, the only time I can find um, God running is in that story of the prodigal son. When the son turns back, the father, who's a picture of our heavenly father, he runs towards the son. And yeah. I've always just loved that concept that when you turn towards God, God runs towards you. When yeah. you turn towards God, God is running towards humanity. And it's, yeah. it's just to your point that, yeah, don't stay in shame. Don't, don't beat yourself up. God, God's not beating you up. Jesus already paid the price. It's about quickly turning to the Father and, and asking for his help again. I, I need grace right now. Even in the midst of my mistake, I need grace today. I need grace yesterday. I need grace tomorrow. I need grace five years from now. So we continue to speak that out and we continue to surrender to God. That's awesome. What would you, what would you, um, what was basically your sermon today about, or what were you preaching on that, um, that your guys or your church were talking about today? Yeah. I'm just looking at this story in Matthew 26, where literally it's, it's the, it's the story of Jesus before he gets, um, betrayed in the garden. He's with his disciples and they're going to have the last supper meal. And there's a lot of just cool, um, stuff in the text about, the, the disciples didn't have a plan for the Passover meal and Jesus, he still had a plan. I, I like that idea. I, I preached on that a little bit today, just about the idea that like God's got solutions to problems you don't even know exist. And maybe you weren't planned for this problem, but, but Jesus already has a plan. I just, I love that idea of the sovereignty of God that although the disciples didn't prepare for the Passover meal, which is a big deal, Jesus still already had a plan and a solution to it. But ultimately the crux of the message was just, Landing on that point that, you know, hours before Jesus is going to die, he's still taking time to, to give thanks. And I titled the message, The Gratitude Effect, The Effects of Gratitude. And I said that gratitude protects your perspective. I said gratitude focuses your future. I said gratitude gravitates toward ge towards generosity. And lastly, that gratitude attracts the right attention. And so I think right now- Go to that time first one. What was the first one? It protects your perspective. Like, so gratitude protects your perspective. I want to just stop there for a second because that's going to help a lot of people. Um, uh, well, first and foremost, like, I've been at this, first of all, like, I'm so blessed. Like, God has blessed me with so many, so much amazing, just so many amazing things, gifts, abilities, um, this home. And, you know, there's a lot that, we can stress out about whether it's the coronavirus or, and not that it's something to just push to the side. It's a big deal, but like, you know, um, there's just so many little things like I, that we can be grateful for just breath in our lungs, being able to walk and talk and breathe. And, you know, I think like, like you said, that gratitude perspective, uh, it, it protects your perspective when your perspective is, you know, man, I'm not going to get back, you know, you know, I'm not going to get back to work. I'm going to lose all this money today um, or this week or whatever it is. You're still, you still have like that perspective. So what was the second one you said? Gratitude focuses your future. Gratitude focuses your future. Can you uh, expand on that one too a little bit? Yes. So I, th I think, I think the first one is all about that beautiful idea of what you're saying right there, which is like, we don't see the world for how the world is. We see the world for how we are. So if I'm unhealthy, I'm going to view the world, even beautiful things, in a toxic way. So gratitude helps protect the way I'm viewing the world currently right now today. Secondly, gratitude focuses my future. And what that tells me is, is that when I live a thankful life, what I'm doing is, is that I'm reminding myself that life isn't just about who I am today. Life is really about who I'm becoming tomorrow. And it's really the motto that you and I and some of our friends live by, which is better at 70, which is I'm not just going to be defined by today, but I'm actually living for a legacy. Um, I'm living not just for an income, I'm living for an impact. And it's about not just what I'm creating today, but what I'm going to leave here on this earth. And so whenever I live grateful, whenever I'm, I express gratitude, when I'm thinking grateful, it puts me into a much bigger story than just my own story. It puts me into the God story. And, and I, think, I, think, 
Sorry, sorry to interrupt you, but no, I, I, I also just I wanted to share something real quick because I'm thinking like, if if you, it's so hard to see the greatness or like obviously I'm able to see all these amazing things that God that God's given me, but one perspective that I really got from Judah that was really cool is that when Jesus healed that dude who was paralyzed and he said, "Your sins are forgiven," right? Was he paralyzed? Yeah, that's the guy. Yeah, the, when he yeah, said that, that, he didn't go right and heal him, right? He, he told him his sins are forgiven to let him know that the most important thing for that guy to be grateful for is not that, you know, he's alive or whatever, whatever, he, th that his soul, his anchor for his soul was actually, you know, he was, he was forgiven. Like, and so, like, for me, I think the perspective of, like, a lot of people don't have hope. It's hard for people to see the the goodness of what's going on because they don't have an anchor for their soul first. And so I think like having that hope for your soul to know that I'm forgiven, I'm going to live for eternity. I mean, that's, that's big stuff. Totally. And I think that that story that you're referencing, which is such a powerful point to make, it's like, what good is it to have help, you know, to have working legs, but to have a broken soul, you know what I mean? So it's like Jesus could heal his broken legs, but that would be a temporary miracle. The real miracle was the fact that he forgave him. And the real miracle was that he gave him salvation, which is the eternal future. It's not about just the here and now. So I fully agree. Because you're no longer worrying about like death so much. I mean, death is such a scary thing. A lot of people are afraid of death. And as, as someone who believes in Jesus and believes that when you die, you get eternal life. Eternal life in heaven is supposed to be this perfect euphoric place and so death is actually graduation and but but in order to have that perspective obviously that takes faith right i mean absolutely absolutely so, um to be absent the, the bodies be present with with the lord and so for christians we're not living life for simply uh happily ever after we're living life for something much bigger than that which is heaven ever after and we have an eternal perspective and that's the best news that no matter what we face um the scripture says no weapon formed against you shall prosper and that doesn't just mean simply for the here and now that means that even if i die by the coronavirus I didn't prosper because i'm going to spend eternity with jesus you know and uh exactly. if life exactly. ends for me today paul said to live as christ to die is gain well how was he able to say such an extreme statement to die is gain yeah, it's because he's echoing right now. We're echoing what the point. You're, it's a graduation that we're going to spend forever with our with our Savior, and that's a very comforting point and a comforting truth in this time right now. That as believers, we don't have to be wayward or operate in fear. We can remind ourselves that we're living for something so much greater than right now, today, or the next thirty years. The the idea of you know, and I'll hear Judah talk about it. And he says, like, we actually believe in immortality, which is, which for people to like hear, and it's just kind of a crazy concept. I never really thought about that. Like, we believe in immortality. Like, we actually believe that, you know, our spirits actually never die. I just thought, I don't know. I just thought that was such a cool thought. Like, um, way to put it like we believe in immortality like god we go we go to heaven and it's like this marvelous amazing place i don't know i just it's it's such a it is it's it's really it's it's just like it's so my spirit just feel like i just feel like an ease there's so much going on right now that i don't know what's going to happen like i don't know what's going on with tour i don't know what's going on in like with my near future but i do know that i my my future is secure knowing that i'm forgiven i'm saved i'm set free from my past i don't have to live in sin or in shame i can live free um and that is so rewarding knowing that like my past doesn't define me i am you know i'm forgiven i'm you know i'm right with god and so when that time comes when you know when and if you know the world ends or if you know if the worst the worst comes to worst you know i know that my faith is you know i'm i'm right with god and that's a, such a rewarding feeling it's a very it's rewarding a safe, feeling and such a safe feeling 
It's a very safe feeling. And the encouraging thing is, is that it's available to all. So anybody who's even listening Everybody. right now or watching this, they right now in a moment can have that exact same security. It doesn't mean that you don't have fears. It doesn't mean that you don't go through times of uncertainty. It just reminds you that when the storm comes, you've built your life on something more solid than this world. There's a lot of things that we don't know today, but there's so many things because of Christ that we do know. We know that God is for us. We know that God loves us. We know that Jesus has saved us. We know that we're right with God. We know that if we were to die today, that we can have confidence in the fact that we'll spend eternity with him. And, you know, the truth go of the to, matter I'm going is, back. I just want to go back on what you touched on a second ago, because you're so right. Yeah. When people, so many people, especially in, you know, they're in a lot of, uh, you know, um, different churches or people, Christians around the world have made it seem like, you know, whether it's like you have to go to a pastor to, you know, be connected to be closer to God, or you need to like, you need to do something special to be, you know, close to God or whatever it is. And, and, and the truth is, is that no matter who you are, no matter what you've done, no matter, you know, how bad you think you are, no matter how messed up you think your life is, God, first of all, isn't afraid of your mess. He's not ashamed of your, what you've done. He wants you to come to him with open arms and um, just accept what he's done for you. And sorry, I, I, I exit out. Right, am I back? You're there, yeah. And he's and and God is like so. He's just for us, no matter what we've done. And it's just like if you, if any of you on the internet, anybody watching, wants to have a relationship with God or with Jesus, it's as simple as just saying, Jesus. I accept what you did for me on the cross. I believe you are, are the son. Of, I believe you are God. And, um, you know, I ask that you forgive me for, from, you know, for my sins. And, you know, I want to, and, and that's, I mean, would you, would you say that that's, that's it, right? It's confess with your yeah, mouth. The scripture says, your heart. Yeah. yeah. Believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. Yet to all who received him, he gave them the right to be called children of God. It's about receiving and believing in Jesus. That's the starting point. That's awesome. That's so Beautiful. awesome. So amazing. It's really awesome, man. For, bro, there's nothing better. There's really nothing better than a t life in, with eternity with our creator. Amen. Amen. There really isn't. There's nothing better. There's no better feeling. No so better. I'm really great. Thank you for chatting with me, bro. I really appreciate you. I love you so much, bro. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and I know a lot of people are going to be encouraged by this. Amen. You're the best. I can't wait till this is over. I'm going to come hug you. Yep. Okay. I love you. I love you so much, man. You're the best. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. So, hey, what's up, bro? I love that talk with Rick. That was awesome. That was, that was good, right? Yeah, I, I was also He's thinking, like, man. man, that guy's just chilling on a Sunday. What, I mean, he already pre recorded his sermon. The guy's winning. He's winning. He he's learned. He's learned over the. He's he's younger than you, bro. He knows what's up, bro. <laughs> <laughs> He's, 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 he's young. He knows the interwebs a little bit better than you do. Yeah. He's, like I said, he's, saying that interwebs. <laughs> That's like the weirdest thing. Are we so blessed or what? Bro, we're so, listening to you and Rich talk. Like we're so forgiven. We're so loved. Our creator is never going to leave us or forsake us. We are categorically blessed. Dude, we have life.
in life. God promises his life and life abundantly. Yes, he does. And even when things seem crappy, like we still have forgiveness. At the end of the day, we're forgiven. And we're promised absolutely forever with our with the lover of our soul, the one who loves us the most, and he's the one who made us. Like, he's so proud of everyone watching this. Like, you have a God who loves you. He's like the best. Yeah. He the is. The best. Right. Perfect. He's perfection. He think is. About, think about the person who you love the most, and think about that. Just think about perfection. Like, literally, the author and creator of the universe. Like, the one who created the mountains and the stars and the birds and the bees like perfection and he Ooh. adores you like he adores us he adores, he adores us, us. Bro. we're always on his mind you know what i love that you say what you always say um god is obsessed with you he is i got that from you he's just obsessed <laughs> with us like and it's just such a cool perspective because like i'm obsessed with my wife like i just love her so much and like I just think about, like, I wish I could be perfect for her. And I know I was, like, flawed. I'm trying my best to, like, be the best husband I can be. But, like, you know, I'm just, I have just my selfish moments. And these moments of just, like, wanting, you know, things for myself or just, you know, just being, just not being perfect. And I just picture a perfect, a perf perfect God who just loves us and is obsessed with us and will never let us down, like, how it's just there's something so awesome about that it's so it's like you ever looked at a baby like a, like for you your little brothers and sisters or a cousin or a little newborn and you're like oh that feeling that sensation of like you want to squeeze their little cheeks and kiss their face yes off. like yes bro, to think that god feels that way towards us towards us without stopping. like like exactly like i was with my little sister the other day i have um a, like a year old baby sister i love you bae you're awesome um she doesn't she doesn't know what i'm saying because she doesn't speak yet <laughs> but um uh, what was i gonna say um but yeah i just want to literally squeeze her to death like she's just so <laughs> yummy like she's just oh like i just love her so much and to think that god looks at us with that same admiration and he's not, no matter what wrong we've done, no matter how much we, we feel like we've messed up, that we've hurt people, that we, you know, God still looks at us like um, exactly the same. You know, he's already paid for those, those things. He's, he took it upon himself to pay the price, to pay the penalty for, bro, that's friggin' awesome, man. Awesome. Awesome. There's nothing yeah, better. Great. There's nothing better. Religion says you got to earn it, deserve it, and work for it, and try harder and be better. Relationship, gospel, Jesus is, he is better, he is perfect, and he did for us what we cannot do for ourselves. And that's why it's good news. Like, Christianity is not about earning, deserving. It's about accepting and receiving and just resting in that, you know? And a lot of people would say, like, you know, a lot of people say that, like, Oh, and they misinterpret it. Like, I'll say, like, I'm a, I believe in Jesus or whatever. And they'll be, oh, I didn't know you were religious. And I'm like, there, there is that distinction between religion and following and loving Jesus. And can you just say that again for people who may be con confused of, like, religion and following Jesus? Yeah, so religion teaches us that the whole premise is us. We're the premise, and we've got to earn, deserve, and warrant it. We've got to work harder and be more moral and be better, and in turn, God will accept us. But Christianity, the gospel, the good news, is that Jesus did for us what we could not do for ourselves. So he was perfect. He was righteous. He was, he was flawless. And because of that, he could pay the penalty for our error and our wrong. So now wow. it's all about just accepting and being like, okay, God, thank you. Um, and every time you do something that hurts someone else or hurts yourself, you can say, I'm accepted and I'm loved. And it's that love that will motivate us uh, to change our lifestyle. It's what's changed my lifestyle. It's the love. It's, it's, it's not out of having to. It's out of wanting to. It's out of yes. like, I can't believe that God loved me in a time where I didn't deserve it. I didn't, you know, I, I could never have earned or deserved it. And God loved me through it. 
it's like I want to I want to do what he says is the right thing to do because I've been so you know it's such a it's such an honor to right exactly and and that's what it's the scripture says cool. offer offer your life as a as willingly willingly because you want to you willingly say God I want to follow you I want to love like you I want to look like you I want to live beyond myself because you love me so much not for his love but because of his love. Everyone on this call right now, you're already loved by God. He's already obsessed with you. And you can never change that. Now it's just mm -hmm. whether or not we just go, all right, I believe it. I believe it. It's literally about accepting and believing it. That's it. Wow. There's every, no every there's day. no need there's no need to there's no need to try to earn it, right? That's right. It's simply right. just accept and receive. Yep. And out of that, God will start to change your heart out of the out of out of you know the goodness of who He is, right? Yeah, and like like if, if if you like to lie and you've been lying a lot and you're a liar, and I know what that's like to lie because I've told plenty of lies, and you like lying, if you'll focus on the love of God, you'll actually begin maybe not immediately or instantly, but you'll start lying less and less because you have confidence that you are loved. I think we lie sometimes because we're insecure and we want people to appreciate us or love us or see us. But if you already know that you're loved and seen and forgiven and accepted, all of a sudden you're like, I don't need to lie anymore. I'm already yeah. loved. You know, it starts to change. Exactly. You. you don't need to like pretend to be someone you're not. You don't have to tell stories to make your, because you know who you are. You know the, love that God has for you. I was, I was also thinking back to the scripture, he who finds himself loses himself, right? Yeah. And if so you can you find your life, let it go. Yeah. Lose let it, it go. Life. And what, what would that mean? Like letting go of your life? People, would, uh, I'm sure some people would be confused by that, you know? Yeah. So the word letting or letting go is another picture and portrait of trusting God and believing in him. So it's this idea of saying, God, I'm really not in control and I can't control myself. I can't footsteps Damn. it's pretty awesome bro bro you're you're cutting out oh you're am cutting i out no worries yeah we missed all that part it was probably trash anyway <laughs> that was garbage man nobody wants to hear you preach to you just kidding <laughs> um <laughs> nah, bro, but man, I'm so, man, through all of this stuff that's going on right now and all of the uncertainty, man, what you said in your, in your um, message the other day of like, there's, I'm, I couldn't be more sure. Come on. Like, I couldn't be more sure that I am, you know, my soul is, um, is secure. It is. Wow. <sighs> Bro, that's if if talk about fire, bro. That's fire, dog. And that and that's what, that's what the guy who wrote half the New Testament, helped by the by Jesus, he said, basically, I've I've been through it all. I've been shipwrecked, pestilence, disease. I've been snake bitten, all this. But I know whom I believe. I know Jesus. And so, no matter what happens in this life, um, I'm gonna spend forever with Him. And that gives us the confidence and because we believe in immortality. We believe that we're designed to live forever and we will live forever in utopia with Jesus. But in the meantime, let's make a difference and let's tell everyone they're forgiven and they're loved by God. And so our passion is not to pass on a mantra or a dogma, it's to introduce people to a person. And he's so awesome. Wow, it's <laughs> fire, bro. Are it's you fire. playing yeah, our, our desire isn't Our desire isn't to just, um, you know, give people, a, a, you know, a, a, a concept that will help them get through life better. It's actually, we believe that this person named Jesus who died on the cross is actually the person, he's God in the flesh who came down as a man to, to literally abolish death. Because death, we actually weren't meant to die. Like, nope. we weren't actually designed to die we're, we're actually designed to live forever that's right and so what jesus did is he literally came defeated death literally rose from the death and you were talking about how 
um, was it Mary or whatever, they were, they were happy when they seen him go, right? Yeah. Can you, can yeah, you, so, can you so, just so, expand on that a little bit? Because that was beautiful. Yeah, yeah. So we, we always think in linear time and space. So we always think, you know, career stuff, things, reputation, renown. And we, we pretend to think that this um, life is forever, but it's not forever. But we're going to go to forever. This is, this is time and space. And it's very limited. It's a vapor, the Bible says. It's a dust. But the reason we can't comprehend that, the reason we don't, our brains don't even properly fully embrace or calculate when someone's gone is because we were pre-wired by our creator to think in terms of immortality and forever. And because Jesus, God, did not want us to live in selfishness and pain and torment and disease, all these things that are the results of our selfishness and sin, he gave us a way out. So now we can simply believe in Jesus and the next life the eternal life, which is ultimate life, will be filled with an absence of sin and freedom and total purity and beauty. So that's what the early Christians believed. When they saw Jesus levitate into the clouds on the third day or after a few days after his resurrection, they were filled with joy because they knew they would see him again in eternity. They knew that as he levitated and disappeared in the clouds, that's where they would go someday. But in the meantime, they knew that they had a job to do and a mission, and that was to share the love, to share the news that was so good that God, the one who made us, loves us, is for us, and wants to have a relationship with us and spend forever with us. So their joy is what you and I are trying to live with, the joy of forever with Jesus that we know we're going to have helps us through the, the temporary pain we're all facing. That's great. You were saying, and, and, and there's scriptures to back that up, which I love, which is like, um, you know, it talks about, um, you know, having joy of the Lord is our strength. That's right. one good one. But then there's another one that like, it surpasses our understanding. Mm. The joy of our Lord, the joy of the Lord surpasses our understanding, meaning like, you know, we have this joy in what Jesus has done for us, and it surpasses the the circumstantial the, the the circumstances we're in, the temporary circumstances like these, you know, uncomfortable, painful moments. I mean, we're talking about like, you know, we have people are you know dying, people are losing their the people that they love, people are losing, Jesus. you know, people are right now have the coronavirus who are in the hospital and battling for their life. You know what I mean? Like this is, and for us to say that we have joy isn't to discredit the pain that's happening in the world right now. No. That's not to do that at all with what we're saying is that we actually still have hope. And when there's hope, there is joy because you, I mean, hope, you, you you got to have joy when there's when there's a sense of hope through it there's got to be the even if it's the small sense of joy because there's so much pain in your you know in your life right now that little bit of joy actually can bring you through um that tough time i mean you lost your father when you were how old yeah 31 31 and this was the you know he was everything to you you know he was yeah, yeah. He was such an amazing dad. He was there for you. He, you know, and, you know, he went to be with Jesus, you know, before, like, just obviously prematurely, or I guess whenever he was supposed to go, but, you know, you were, I mean, you just weren't just joyful, like happy, you know, you weren't like, oh, the joy of the Lord's my strength. Like that pain still hit you. Yeah. And, and that speaks to Mary and Martha were these, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus were some of the closest friends that Jesus had during his public ministry. And Mary and Martha's little brother, like I said, named Lazarus, he dies. And he dies, and Mary and Martha are so grieved. And Jesus shows up at their home, and he cries with them. The shortest verse in all the, in all the Bible, Jesus wept. But you know the very next verse, he raises Lazarus from the dead? So I remember thinking, like, why did Jesus cry if he knew he was going to bring Lazarus back from the dead? Well, he, because empathy, eternity doesn't eliminate empathy. Just because we're going to spend forever with Jesus doesn't mean that the pain we're experiencing right now isn't real. And it is real. And that's why, for those of us that follow Jesus, we share the tears of Jesus. 
even though we know Lazarus will live forever, even though I know my dad will live forever, I still cry because in the moment, the pain is still real. And, mm -hmm. and the pain that people, three million Americans don't have jobs today because of this global pandemic. That's just in our country. That's not Canada or other countries of the world. Millions and millions of people are wondering, where's my income? Well, how am I going to feed my kids? And I want you to know that I serve a Jesus who weeps with you and cries with you. Mm -hmm. Even though he is mm -hmm. the antidote and the answer, he still feels your pain. And he's there mm -hmm. with you. And he'll never leave you nor forsake you. And the greatest response that we I just feel like, world, sorry to interrupt sorry. you, but I just had a, a really interesting thought. Please. Like, I just feel like a lot of people could be angry at hearing this news because they're, they're like, you have no idea what I'm feeling, what I'm going through right now. I'm feeling, I just lost my, like, I just lost this person. I just went through this. Like, you're telling me to have joy right now? Like, right. excuse my French, but fuck you. Like, what, what, are you, right. what are you talking about? You know what I mean? Right. Like, and for those people who are hurting and, and confused and like, how could I have joy in a time like this? I mean, what would you say to that person? Yeah, but I think when we say the word joy, it's important for us to define. We're not talking about happy clappy. We're talking about an assurance and a comfort and a confidence that comes from eternity. But it does not um, belittle or minimize pain and loss and, and even strong feelings that you have. We see throughout uh, David's life in the Old Testament, he's very candid with God. He's yelling at God. He's using choice words. He's getting, he's getting things off his chest. And nowhere ever did God condemn him for that. He welcomed mm -hmm. our honest pleas and prayers and cries and pain. But yet our joy, our comfort and confidence and assurance is anchored to the idea that this someday will all be over. This will be over and we will be home. And home is in the arms of the one who made us in the first place. And he loves us so much. And so, man, I couldn't agree more. We are not here to minimize people's problems or pain or even presume that you and I understand everything that people are going through because we don't. But we know there's a God who does. And he's there yeah. with us in the middle of it. And again, knowing this and believing this, it doesn't make you and I at all any better than anybody who no doesn't no believe. So... I know a lot of Christians and this has been really, you know, hurtful for me in the past. And just seeing this is like, they make themselves to be this bet, like better than other people because they have this faith and they have this community of people who, you know, want to make themselves feel better by, you know, making themselves to be elite. And that hurts my, that breaks my heart. You know, the last, I, I hate that. And I hate that people would, be turned off by the idea of who Jesus is because of a, you know, a certain group that would want to, you know, just, I don't know, man, that's just, it sucks. So just anybody, I just want to say to anybody who's experienced that have been hurt by a church who feels like, you know, they were just being this, like, that's just not, that's not like you said before, like that's religion. That's not, that's not who Jesus is. And Jesus actually, like you said, he wept, right? Like he, he cried because his friend was dead, right? But he right. was going to, he was, he knew he had the power to, revi to, to heal him. But what he was saying is that he, it was to say that he feels our pain. He feels that, you know, and he, and he has empathy and he, and that's what we're to do, right? As Christians is like have empathy towards people who are broken and hurting and, and like be sensitive because like sometimes people don't need to be preached at yeah sometimes people just need a hug that's it that's what's it. more important saying that jesus going yeah but well jesus can heal you you know it's like sometimes people don't want to hear that they just want to hug and sometimes you know we just need to be more sensitive to what someone's going through and not try to preach at them because like yeah. obviously you know there's people right now watching that you know um you know need to hear this and whatever we're we you know we're really intentional about saying what we're doing in this moment we are talking about jesus we're having church right at home right, right. but there's times where you know obviously we are the church but we don't have to be 
preachers. You know, we don't have to be preachers. We can yeah. And just let we can just love and let that be the love of Jesus. And sometimes that's like better, wouldn't you think? Yeah, absolutely. There's just no room for moral elitism in our belief system. The Bible says all of us fall short. All of us have failed and faltered. And so this concept of them and they, well, you know them, you know they. Um, that yeah. them and they is you and it's me. We are yeah. our fellow man. Like I am yeah. you, but you are me and we are connected and we're broken and we're flawed. And yeah. Jesus loves us even in There's that no them and so, me. We're all in this together. Like that's yeah. the true. Yeah. We yeah. need each other. And we, we need do. love right now more than we need even um, uh, answers or explanations. We need that's love. That's exactly right. That's it. And what you and I believe that love is actually a person. That's right. And his name's Jesus. Because people, people are always like, what is love? And we actually believe, right? Love is actually Jesus. Jesus. He is love. He is and love. following him, and when you learn, when you follow him, that's when you learn to actually operate in the, 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 the what is it, the, 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 the gifts? Is, what is it, like patience? What, that's not the gifts, but patience, kindness. The fruit of the you know, spirit. Love is not, the, fruit the fruit of the, of the spirit, spirit, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Gentleness, self-control, yeah, mercy, love. Yeah. It's awesome. It's awesome. It is awesome. You're awesome. <laughs> I love our I still got makeup on. <laughs> Good. Keep it on. Good. Keep it. It's, if, if, it, 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 it's just like, I don't know. It feels, feels nice. <laughs> it's nice. I it's think nice. Chelsea, Chelsea likes it. So. Yeah. That's my wife, by the way. That is your wife. I love what are you so doing much. for the rest of the day? I love you so much. Um, I, what am I doing right now? I am, uh, just sitting here, Haley and I went for a walk. Um, I've been shooting this, I have this like mini basketball. Oh yeah. And the mini basketball net. And I just, I have <laughs> so much, bro. I literally have the best time. Just, there's just all this space here. Like, look at all this space. So I just like throw my ball and I could be here for hours just you know, it's almost like how you like putting or something like that. Like, yep. just, it's just so therapeutic. So I'm just hanging. But yeah, I really I appreciate you. Hey, can we can we say a prayer for, you know, first of all, um, anybody who wants to accept um, Jesus today and wants to have, you know, eternity with, you know, cheat with just live for eternity and Love have you. the love of Jesus. Yeah. Do, do you want, can you, can you say that? Can you help yeah. us with that? So just, just before we pray, um, if there's anyone watching, first of all, there's no, no, no pressure. Um, you, mm -hmm. you, you're loved regardless. But if you feel compelled, if you feel persuaded that Jesus is who he claimed to be, which is the antidote and the answer and the way to a real relationship with God, then uh, we want to invite you in this really normal space to accept him. And, and that's what faith is. Faith is accepting and receiving. And so um, God loves you so much that he came to uh, pay the penalty for your error, my error, our wrong and our sin. And so if we simply believe and receive, we're forgiven. So if you would like to receive the forgiveness of Jesus right now, wherever you are, you can just say, I receive it. I accept it. Simple as that. It's probably good for you to hear yourself say it, do it. And in that moment, in this moment, you're forgiven forever. I'd love to pray mm -hmm. for you. God, I thank you so much for any man, woman, boy, or girl, our friends that are watching right now, God, we thank you that you knew this moment would happen and you knew that you would sway and persuade hearts and souls right now to accept you and believe in you. We trust you to do the persuading. We trust you, God. You are so gracious and kind. Thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you for a new beginning. And thank you for the assurance of forever and eternity with you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Judah. I we love you. It. I love you so much. Love you. And I'll call you a little later. Okay, perfect. Yeah. I love you so much. Love you. Bye-bye. Bye, guys.